everyone. In this lecture, we will learn how to deal with the circuit during charging and discharging. In chapter 7, we will deal with simple circuits that contain inductors or capacitors. In chapter 8, we will consider more complicated circuits that contain both inductors and capacitors. And why we call it first order or second order? This is coming from math solution. When you analyze these types of circuit, you may have first order differential equation, and then we call it first order circuits, or second order differential equation, and this is called the second order circuits. Okay, before we start, let me connect to the previous lecture. If you remember, when we have a capacitor connected to a supply, assume we have a series resistor here, and we have a capacitor, plus, minus, and this is 10 volt. How could we analyze this simple circuit? Last lecture, we mentioned that under DC condition, under DC condition, So under this condition, we mentioned that we may replace this capacitor by an open circuit. And then the current will be zero. No current will flow. This means the voltage across capacitor will be 10 volt, same like supply. So in fact, this is true, but after steady state, condition. So steady state condition means the circuit is connected for enough time and then coming to stable mode. But when you connect this capacitor, when you start to connect this capacitor, if the current will be zero starting from the first moment, so assuming that this switch will close at zero time. Will you find the current zero immediately? This will never happen. Because we have a transient period. During this transient period, once you connect the switch, there will be a current here. But after enough time, this current will be zero and the capacitor will come to steady state condition. And this is, we call it under DC conditions. And then the capacitor will be open circuit and the current will be zero. But at the beginning, when you connect the switch, the current is not zero. So we need to find this current. And the steady state condition, in fact, you may consider it after a very short time. Because this time, when you connect the switch and the current will flow, and after a short time, the current will be zero. The first period, we call it transient. Transient period. Transient period. So we have transient period for a very short time. This will be followed by steady state condition after the transient. And this transient contain charging or discharging. So how to find this current during this small time or transient time? So we need to find this, to solve this circuit, to find the current here. And this current, after enough time, it will be zero and the capacitor will charge. This means the voltage across the capacitor, that should be 10 volt, it will start small voltage and then the capacitor will charge during the transit period to reach 10 volt. And why the current be zero? Because the capacitor charge will become like supply. So if you have two volts are the same, then the current here will be zero. This is the reason we reach zero current after the capacitor is fully charged. So this is our topic today. How to deal with, with circuits under this condition. So let's, we, in this uh, uh, circuit, we have four conditions or four cases 
The first, we call it source free. Source free circuits. This means you don't have supply. Okay? If you don't have supply, do you have current or voltage in the circuit? You may have or not. So in these circuits, we rely on stored energy in the circuit. So the capacitor should have already charging voltage. Or the inductor should have charging current or initial current. And this is called initial conditions. This is called initial conditions. So you already have a capacitor with a voltage, initial voltage, or inductor with initial current. And then we need to analyze the circuit to find what will happen during this. This is called source free. The second two types, we will deal with step response. Step response means you have supply, but this supply is DC supply. DC supply. So when you, say, you consider a circuit with this supply, we call it step response. So you apply DC supply to the circuit. This might be voltage or current. But you may ask, and in this case, do I have initial condition? You may have or not, or step response. It depends on the circuit. Let's have examples. So this is the first circuit that we will consider. Simple RC circuit. If you try to solve the circuit to find the current, simply you have this equation. Here we have the capacitor. Initial voltage is V0. Okay. And the voltage across the capacitor, we need to find it, which is in fact the same voltage across the resistor. This equation describes the behavior of the voltage during this voltage. As you can see, it's an exponential equation, but with negative exponent here. This means it will start from V0 and goes down, it's called decaying, to zero. So if you need to draw this equation, this is the curve you have. So we have initial condition in the capacitor, and you connected this capacitor, assuming that the connection at zero time, so you have switch here, and this switch will close at zero time. Then this capacitor, which is already charged, it will discharge through the resistance. When the capacitor discharge, the capacitor will lose the stored energy, and then the voltage will go down, will decay, will die, till zero. After around 5,000, this is the time constant that we'll consider now, you may assume that the voltage is zero, approximately zero. In fact, it reached around 0.7 percentage, less than 1%. So we assume the voltage now is zero. So this is called the natural response of the circuit. Natural response, which is coming from the stored energy inside the capacitor. Okay? Back again to the time constant, if you need to find the time constant for this capacitor, it is R times C from the equation, so you could replace this one by this one. And then you may draw the circuit tau, and if you need to find the time constant, or to describe what will happen at the time constant, so the time constant at this, after the time constant, the circuit response will decay to around 36.8%. If you deal with a capacitor like this case, so the capacitor voltage 
will be reduced to 36.8% at the time constant. As you can see here, if you find the value at tau, you will find this is the value at the time constant. And as I said, after five taus, you may assume the voltage is zero. So the voltage zero as an approximation. These are few other curves to describe the effect of the time constant. So if you need to change the resistor or capacitor, because the time constant equals R times C. So if you change R or C, you will change the time constant. What will happen when you change the time constant? If the time constant goes down, the circuit will discharge quickly. The response will be fast. So this curve for 0.5 but this curve for 1 but this curve for 2 as you can see for 2 the curve stay longer for longer or for bigger time constant so in this circuit if you need to find the dissipated power function of time simply voltage times the current you will have this equation function of time and if you need to find the absorbed energy by the resistor why we call it absorbed energy or dissipated energy because the capacitor now is injecting current so releasing the energy we have stored energy inside the capacitor that was half c v square so this is a stored energy inside the capacitor when you connect to the resistor when you connect the resistor then this capacitor will inject the current and then will release the energy inside, stored inside it and then he will lose the energy. This energy will be dissipated in the resistor here. So if you need to find this energy, this, this is the power, dissipated power, and this is the dissipated energy if you make the integration for the equation. And if you focus in this equation, you will find that if you put T, goes to infinity after enough time or we call it around five thousand then you will find this will be zero this term will be zero and then you have half c v square this means all the stored energy in the capacitor will go will dissipate in the resistor and finally no current no energy Let's have a simple example. In some circuits, you may have a circuit without switch or with the switch, but you have already the capacitor charged. But in some other circuits, the capacitor is not charged, but you connect to charge and then connect another connection to discharge. So you may have one-way switch like this one. So this is one-way switch. So you have Two points to connect you may have another switch two-way switch so we have three points here to switch connect for example to this at the beginning and then move to this at the end okay let's have this example how to analyze the circuit find the voltage across the capacitor here how to find the voltage here and the switch here is opened the direction will show the behavior of the switch from this arrow you can see that the switch is opened so the switch was closed was connecting the two points before zero t less than zero but after zero time the switch will be opened at zero time this means at zero time the switch will open like this so this is t greater than zero let's have the the equation for the capacitor here how to find we need to consider the initial condition when you analyze the circuit we need the initial voltage and for inductor we need initial current it could be given at the beginning, as I mentioned, or it could be charged from switches. B 
before zero time. And this is what we call it initial conditions. This is the reason in this chapter and next chapter, we will have all circuit with switches. And the reason of switches to charge the elements and then make a change by switches to release or discharge the energy. How to find this voltage? First, we need to find the initial voltage. We find it before zero time. So we draw the circuit before zero time. Before zero time, here, the circuit was in a steady state condition for a long time. So before zero, the circuit the switch is closed and the switch is here. Switch is closed and the circuit for long time. For long time, you may apply under, under DC conditions. Then this capacitor will be open circuit. Okay. So if this capacitor is open circuit, then the voltage across capacitor will be the same across 9 ohms. Then simply divider, voltage divider rule to find the voltage. And this is V0. Okay. Once we found the initial condition, then we move to next period after zero time. So after zero time, this switch will be open and then you will remove this part from the circuit. So we have nothing here. So this capacitor now charge it with 15 volt under this condition. And now disconnect it and it will discharge through these two resistors. So to analyze this type of circuit, you have to have one capacitor and one resistor. And this one resistor is the equivalent resistor, or you may call it also thin resistor. You find it by the same concept. So focus at these two points of the capacitor and look the direction of this charge and find the equivalent resistor. In this circuit, it's very simple. They are in series. Then you have 10 ohms here. And this is important because this is the value that you will use to find the time constant, R times C. C, there, but R, this is the equivalent one. So simply here, we could find the R equivalent and find the time constant, okay? And after that, you could apply the mean rule for this equation, V of T equals V0 E minus five, E minus T over tau. So tau point two, so giving minus five here. This means if you put for long time the voltage V after long time would be zero. But V initial at zero time it was fifty. And of course you could find the voltage, it will follow the same curve as we explained. So starting from 15, goes down here, and you could find at any time. So if you need to find the voltage at any time, just put the time value here, and then you will find the voltage here. Of course, it will be less than 15 volt. Hopefully it's clear. If you need to find the stored energy, initial stored energy in the capacitor, it's very simple. You have initial voltage in the capacitor, was 15. So if you need to find the stored energy in the capacitor, half CV square, then you find this energy. And this is the total stored energy in the capacitor. And as I mentioned, this stored energy 
will be released and dissipated in the resistor during this discharging process. So the capacitor will lose its energy that will be consumed in the capacitor. If we go to RL circuits, the same concept, similar equation, but the only difference is that the initial condition or stored energy in the inductor store in the form of current. So the initial current in the inductor I0 will starting from here. So the stored energy in the inductor in the form of current, this initial current will will move through the resistor, will flow in the circuit here, and then the inductor will lose its stored energy that was half half i half l i square half l i square in the capacitor half c v square but in the inductor half l i square and again the initial current was i zero and then it will go down dying decaying to reach zero at infinity or around 5 tau, as we assume. So the difference is that initial condition in inductor is zero is uh, uh, initial current. And also the time constant tau is different. The capacitor is R times C, but here, this is coming in next slides, same definition, the current goes to 36.8 percentage at tau. And tau here equals L over R. But tau in the capacitor, in the capacitor, tau equals R times C. You have to consider that. Okay. Also, if you need to find the power in the resistor at any time, you multiply voltage times current. We have the current here. How to find the voltage? V, if you have the current here, how to find the voltage? V equals L di by dt. So, and we have the current derivative. So, this is a equation for the power. You may use it directly. And if you need to find the energy, same, make integration for the power from zero to any time. Then you have this equation for the dissipated power in the resistor which is coming from the inductor. Similar to the capacitor, at infinity after long time, this will be zero, and you will find the dissipated power half L I square. So it will be the same energy that was stored in the inductor. So the inductor will lose stored energy in the resistor, similarly. We have another example here about the inductor. This switch was closed. So before zero, this was a situation, but after zero, this was a situation. And from the direction, you could find which one before, which one after zero. And this is very, very important. Again, before zero, you need to find the current. And then after zero, you need to find the current in time four, which is I zero E minus T over tau. So this current, I have to find it beforehand from the initial condition or zero time, before zero time. So, here in the inductor, before zero time, which is DC condition, steady state condition, then the capacitor would be, the inductor would be short circuit here. Okay. Uh, 
I'm waiting for a question. Yeah. When this short circuit, then the para resistance with inductor will be removed. Because if you have a short circuit, zero resistance in parallel with another resistance, then the total will be zero. So you may replace these two branches with just short circuit here. Okay, how to find the current here? How to find the current here? I think it's very easy. You could find by different methods, but the simple method that you need to find, you may find the total current and then divide. Use the current divider. You could use, for example, node voltage to find the voltage here and then V over four, you could find the current here. Anyway, if I need to find the total current, for the supply, I have two ohms in series with 4 and 12. So 4 and 12, they are in parallel. Okay, and the equivalent for them is 3. If you add with 2 here, this will be the total resistor. Then you could find the current here, the total current. To find I0, you need to divide this current or use divider rule to find the current in the inductor. So this is the current in the inductor here. This is I0. Then we move to after the switching operation that may maybe open or close switch. So now we will open the switch. When you open the switch, you will remove all this part again. And now you have the inductor here with three resistors 16 12 and 4 you should focus here okay i have the current i have i0 but i need to use this equation you have already i0 correct but you don't know tau the time constant okay tau equal L over R. I know L, but I don't know R. How to find R? Again, if it is one resistor, just simply R. But if you have many resistors, then you need to find R equivalent or R7. They are the same. So now focus at the inductor terminals and look to this side, okay, and find the combinations. You will find these two resistors are in series and uh, in parallel with this one. Then you could find four plus 12, they are in series, in parallel with 16, which means multiplication over summation, you will have eight ohm. Then find tau, L over R equivalent, and from tau you could of course use uh, the general equation form. And this I zero, this is I zero, and this is the current. Okay, for step response, it's more complicated. So we have a capacitor here. Also connected, will be connected with a resistor here, but we have a supply. And this supply is DC. When we analyze these types of circuit, we will have this equation. And you may use it directly. You don't have to find the differential equation like here and solve it. You can use it directly. Let's focus in this equation. It's very important to understand this equation. The first point, this equation after switching operation, after zero time. Okay? You will see here V0 the initial conditions in the capacitor the initial stored energy capacitor in some circuits maybe v0 equals zero so you don't have any stored energy in the capacitor so in some problems if it didn't give you the initial voltage in the capacitor or current initial current in, in the inductor then you assume it's zero 
But as I mentioned, sometimes it's not given, but you need to calculate. You need to find from before zero time. So this is a general form. So this is the initial condition, initial condition. Okay, you can see also Vs, and this is supply. It appears as a constant here, and appears also with the exponential term here. In next slide, we'll learn these two components. As you can see, we have three components. We have Vs, V0 times exponential, minus Vs times exponential. You may consider Vs equal zero, for example, special case. So we don't have supply here. And if you try that, you will find the voltage equals V0 exponential. It is the same like source free that we have discussed in the previous slides. But so this is a general form. You may use it for any case. Okay, let's study it more. If you try to draw this equation, you will have this curve. So V0 here, Vs, and the capacitor voltage will start from initial condition, initial voltage, it could be zero. If it's zero, it will start from here. But it will start from zero and then will reach move to reach the supply voltage here, Vs. This is a behavior of the circuit. But in some cases, maybe Vs, now we have Vs greater than V0. It could be opposite. But anyway, in all cases, the capacitor will reach Vs after steady state condition. Okay. So, if you have this, this is a voltage equation. If you need to find the current in the capacitor, you could find the derivative. But this equation, if you have Vs, V0 equals 0. If you have V0 equals 0, you will have this equation for the current. But you may also find it, if V0 not 0, you could find the derivative for this to find the current. Now we need to understand these components in this equation. We have two components. You could divide this equation, this complete response, into two components. The first component is the natural response. Natural response component contains V0. Which is coming from the stored energy. When you connect the circuit, you have a stored energy that will be released. This response from the stored energy is called natural response. But when you connect supply, this is called forced response. So this supply will force the behavior of the circuit. Then this component is related to Vs. This means I could divide this total response into two components, natural and forced. So this is a natural component. And as you can see, we have V0. But this is a forced component that has Vs here. You can see Vs. So if you have zero initial condition, zero voltage, then the natural component would be zero. If you have no supply, then the forced components would be zero. If you have both, then you will have the total response here. You could also, here we have natural and forced. Okay, this is still the same definition. You could also divide it into another two components. Steady state component 
and transient component. Steady state component, this is a component after long time. But this transient component, the component during the transient period, during the charging or discharging process. So this component includes the exponential decaying component, the over tau. So if you need to find this component, if you go here, you will find this component that has the exponential term. So the component that has the exponential term, which is changing by time, decaying, dying, this is called the transient component because it's changing with time. But the other component, which is constant, this is called the steady state component. And why they call it steady state component? Because steady state means after enough time, and after enough time or long time, the exponential will be zero, then this component will be zero, and this will be the remaining one. And this is the reason we call it steady state component. So if you have a capacitor, for example, and the capacitor changing like this, and we'll reach another component here, this is a steady state component here, which is usually VS, but it could change depending on the circuit. Okay, now we have a very important conclusion. The complete response could be divided into two components. These two components could be transient and steady state, or could be natural force it so you should be able to find which component so now we divided it into transient and steady state in the previous slides if you remember we divided into natural and force components and again by looking into the details of this equation this steady state component is the response after long time so if you found the response after long time simply here by infinity, this is a steady state component. So we could replace Vs by V infinity. And we have stored the energy, the voltage at zero time, and this is the initial voltage in the capacitor before switching action. So this is initial voltage. So you could rewrite this equation into this form. So if you are analyzing the circuit, you could use Vs or V0, but the circuit has to be like this. You need to have only one source, you need to have only one resistor, you need to have only one capacitor. If the circuit is different, then you have to use 7. So this one will be 7, and this one will be V7. So you need to simplify the circuit to have only one resistor and one, and one supply. If the circuit has more one supply or one resistor, then you have to find the equivalent for all. And now Thevenin could be applied. So we have two methods in this chapter to analyze the circuit. You may consider Thevenin, or you may consider this equation. This equation is another technique to analyze the circuit. And using this equation, you need to find the response at, at zero first, and then at infinity, and find tau, and then you could find this equation directly without finding Thevenin. But still, to find tau, again, you, you need r -thevenin. So we have to use r in all methods. But v you may use it, or you may use this as equation. Let's have an example and see how it works. So this is a two-way switch. This means the switch, you can see from the direction, so is t equals zero. So the switch, before zero, switch this, this connection, but after zero, this point is A, there's no name here, okay, but this point is B, so it will be like this, and this is A, 
and this is B. Same technique. We will deal with the same technique. And this capacitor, this capacitor has no charge. But when the capacitor, before zero time, the capacitor will connect it to this circuit, to the left, and it will charge. Lab V0. But after zero time, the capacitor will be connected to the right circuit, and then we need to find V of T. Again, you may use two methods, but you have to find the equivalent resistance using Thevenin, if, if the circuit is complicated. But let's try step by step. How to find V0? We need to consider the right, the left circuit. So you have supply. You have supply. Here, this capacitor. If it's confusing, you could redraw it separately. If it's confusing, so this is a capacitor. Will be open circuit, and we need to find V zero, which is V of zero. So this is five, and this is three, and this is twenty-four. How to find the voltage across the capacitor? Which here the same voltage across five. We have only one current here. You could find the current and multiply in the resistor to find the resistor. Or you may use directly the voltage divider rule to find the voltage across capacitor, which is V0. Once you found the initial condition, then you no need for the circuit. You then move to the next position of the switch and find the new circuit. So when you connect, so this is T0. Now we'll move to after zero, then the circuit will be a resistor under supply, and then you have the capacitor here. The circuit is simple, okay? And we have the capacitor here. So the initial voltage here, V0 equals 15. And when you connect the switch move to this direction, then we will have a current here. We'll have a current in this circuit. Okay, and we need to find what will happen in the voltage. That was initially 15 volt. This voltage will change due to the supply. Okay, you may guess from the value of the supply. If the supply voltage less than the initial voltage in the capacitor, then the capacitor will be more powerful and would release energy in the supply. But if the until reaching the supply voltage, but if the voltage is higher, like this case, then the capacitor, in fact, this initial voltage will reach the supply voltage. So it's continuous charging. But how to find this mathematically? Okay. To solve it. To find R7 in here will be 4 kilo ohms, which is just one resistor. Okay. And we will use this value to find tau. Once we find tau, go to the equation that we use. If you need to find uh, the voltage at infinity after a long time, then again this capacitor will be open circuit here. After reaching 30 volt, capacitor open circuit, no current, then the voltage across capacitor will be the same like supply. So the voltage equal 30. So we have V infinity. Okay. You may use this form or use the other form. So we have another form V of T equals Vs plus. V0 minus Vs exponential T over tau. Vs 30. It is the same like infinity here. 30. V0. It's constant for both methods, which is 15. So you could use it here or use it here. 
So you may use one of these equations to analyze the circuit. And we have already tau, then find the response from the circuit. And this is the final response of the circuit. This one, sorry, this one. So in this example, if you need to find the value at one second, so you could find the voltage at one second. After one second from connecting the switch, you will find it here. At zero second, it is 15. After one second, it will be 20. So it's increasing because the supply is higher than so the voltage will reach. And if you need, you need to find it after four seconds, for example, you could find it again using the same equation. So we have, this is a response. Similarly, in the inductive circuits, but inductive circuits, we have another two equations. They are very similar. This is the first one, and this is the second one. So this is very similar. The response of the current will be steady state one plus minus uh, initial one, initial current, minus steady state times the exponential. You could use this one or use the other equation here. The current in this simple circuit, the current, we have initial current here, I0. So the steady state one, when the current, when the, after enough time, this inductor will be short circuit, and then the current will be Vs over R. So this is the steady state one, Vs over R, plus initial minus Vs over R times exponential. So if you, if you like to analyze the circuit, you could use this equation one or this equation it's up to you okay if you need to draw the circuit will be like this but again this shape could be changed if vs over r is higher okay if, if let's assume that if this is uh, i0 okay but vs over r is here vs over r is here so the current will start from I0, but this is Vs over R, and it will increase to this one. Okay, um, let's have an example. So this switch was closed before zero, and then opened after zero. When the switch is closed, it in fact, it makes short circuit here. So it will eliminate this resistor because no current will flow in the resistor. All the current will go around the switch here. So you can assume this is not there, but after opening the switch, it will be appear. Again, we have the equation, but we need to find I0 and then tau. And to find tau, you need to find R equivalent or R thevenin to find tau. After that, you apply the equation. You could use the equation I of T equals Vs over R plus I0 minus Vs over R exponential T over tau. And tau L over R equivalent. Okay. If you need to find that, let's start by the first uh, case T then zero so when before the zero time this is connected then we have only one resistor here and this coil will be short circuit then the current will be voltage over this then you find i zero okay this is the zero current after zero we could use the other equation which is i of t equals i seed state plus I0 minus I state state exponential. So here in the in this example, if you decided to use, you need to find I state state. After zero, this will be open, the switch is open. Then this resistance three should be considered. And the circuit has two resistors in series. Again, after zero time, we have a current. And again, for this condition, steady state, this will be short circuit. And the current, the new current, will be voltage over summation of resistors and series. Then find I infinity. Okay. 
you still need tau you need to find the earth event again they are in series like like here so they have the total resistance and tau from this l over earth event then you have the time in seconds and you may apply directly to the equation here you have tau you have i c state you have zero then you could find the equation of the current and this is a equation okay and this is a steady state you can see it's here which is here okay so this is a component and this is a transient component okay another example here more complicated with more sources and more elements we need to focus in the inductor here this is the inductor okay i need to find the current in this inductor same technique same steps we have switch takes before zero find i zero take after zero find r7 okay to calculate tau and then you need to find i steady state and i zero again this is i zero then you may use the equation again i of t equals steady state one plus initial minus steady state exponential or you may use i t vs over r plus i0 minus vs over r exponential but to use this equation you have to have coil in series with a resistor and supply so in this circuits you have many elements then in this case you have to use thevenin to use this equation you need R7 and V7. So you replace Vs by V7 here. Okay, I think in this example he, he solved it using this method. Let's see. So this is a form. And before zero, before zero, this is open. So this branch is not there at all. So the circuit has inductor and three ohm and two ohms and supply here and again this is this is a condition this will be short circuit then divide the voltage over the resistors to find the initial current you can go now after zero you need to find the thevenin if you focus in the terminals of the supply this is very important focus here in the terminals and replace sources by short circuit then you will find the 6 ohm with 2 ohms in parallel switch is closed so you have connection here and this is short and this is short 2 and 6 in parallel and both will be in series with 3 so 2 and 6 in parallel multiplication over submission plus 3 you could find R equivalent or R7 same then I need to find from R7 in, I could calculate the tau, the time constant. Then I need to find the, the current. So we have now tau, we have I0. Okay, I need to find the steady state current. Okay, steady state current. We have the circuit, the full circuit we have. And then find the current here in this branch. Again, after considering the inductor as short circuit. How to find this? There are many methods. And here he decided to use the node voltage method. So we have one node here. We assume it's V. If I succeeded to find V, simply divide over this resistance, you could find the current in this inductor. After a long time, which is a steady state current. I think you, you should be able to apply the node voltage method to find this equation. Okay, then we find V, V over 3, then you have I infinity, 
simply apply to the equation and then you have the equation for the current of course you may use Thevenin I would recommend you to try Thevenin to analyze the circuit you should reach the same solution so this is the last slide okay if you have any questions please don't hesitate to contact me or ask and we'll have a discussion class also to discuss these issues thank you